Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm going to be taking a look at Psylocke, otherwise known as Captain Britain, with her newest uniform, to see how she does with her newest uniform, as well as how much better her upgrade makes her. I tested her in all content, and with and without her newest uniform, so depending on what you are interested in, you can check out the descriptions, and I've timestamped all the different content that I tested on there. Just as a preface, I'm not covering Colossus or Sinister in this video, though you might see some clips with Colossus on the team in the Alliance Conquest part of the testing. Regardless, if you're just interested in my overall view of the character upgrades and uniforms with this patch, I would say that Psylocke is primarily for PvE, Sinister is primarily for PvP, and did actually get a pretty decent damage upgrade as you'll see in the following videos especially with his artifact that makes him unkillable, and Colossus seems to have gotten the short end of the stick, but you'll see kind of how his upgrade ended up being with the video that follows as well. All my testing is done with these card stats, so just keep that in mind when you're watching the video. All of the world boss stages that I completed was with a regular CTP of destruction, since that's what I had on at the time. You can definitely make her work with a single skill damage proc like an energy or destruction, though it's much easier to play her with a CTP of Rage or a CTP of Judgment. Considering she is an elemental type and does even have Guard Break immunity in her kit on her tier 1 passive when you use the new uniform, I would probably advise to use a CTP of Judgment since you can get the most value out of that for PvE and it does work pretty decently in PvP as well. The rotation that I used with a single skill damage proc, i.e. the destruction, is 3, cancel, 4, slight, delay, cancel, 5. Then, when you get the awakening skill unlocked, you do 3, cancel, 4, delay, cancel, 6, cancel, 5. If you have a CTP of Rage or Judgment equipped, the rotation when you use the awakening skill changes, whereas the base rotation without the awakening skill stays the same. So when you have the Awakening skill, the rotation with a Rage or Judgment now becomes 3, Cancel, 6, Cancel, 4, Delay, Cancel, 5. The reason that you use the 6 earlier when you can proc on multiple skills is to get that damage accumulation up faster, whereas you wouldn't use this rotation when you're using a single skill damage proc because it would mess up your proc on the 5th skill. As you saw in the previous clip, even with no Transcendence or Awakening skill unlocked, I'm still able to take down stage 99 of Call Obsidian in a minute and 8 seconds. She can even do stage 99 of Thanos in 3 minutes and 7 seconds. Keep in mind that all the testing that I've done in PvE and PvP, I guess, is without the artifact, and considering that the artifact gives her a lot of crit damage that goes past the cap, she has the potential to be even way better than what you're seeing here. Her damage increase when you transcend her is pretty nice, though her HP stat bump isn't that great, considering that she also gets a stat bump from her uniform passive, which gives her that extra 30% HP. This is one reason why she's not the best character to build in terms of PvP, because she is kind of fragile. Regardless, if you did want to build her for PvP, you have many options. If you want to build her as a hybrid, you can go with something like a Destruction, since it gives you the penetration that she's missing from her kit, or you could also even use CTP of Judgment, since she has that Guard Break immunity built in, and because it lowers the elemental resistances with the CTP of Judgment effect that it has in there, you can make her effective versus characters that have high mental resistance, which would be stuff like the Defenders or possibly even Gilgamesh. If you wanted to use her specifically only for PvP, then I would guess going with something like an Invincible would be your best bet to make her the most consistent. So that would be either a CTP of Transcendence, since again she has the Guard Break immunity built in, or you could use a CTP of Authority if you want to target those that steal effect when you reforge it. Her uniform passive does also give her increased critical damage in her kit, so if you decide on something like a CTP of Destruction or Authority, you have to keep in mind that you'll likely go over the cap and the crit damage values won't really add too much to the build. 
you can see just how much of a difference the Awakening skill makes, since it puts the character up there with some of the best one-shot characters for content like World Boss Ultimate, Danger Room Extreme, and Giant Boss Raid. With the Awakening skill unlocked, I finished Call in 15 seconds, which is about 45 seconds faster than without the Awakening skill at all. It took me two minutes to take down Thanos, which is about a minute improvement from the clear without the Awakening skill. To get a better idea of just how good the character is, here is me taking on stage 25 of Null, but do keep in mind that I still do not have her artifact, which does make a big difference, and the CTP is just a basic CTP of destruction. It isn't reforged, which means that she can push much, much higher. But as you can see, with just that CTP of destruction and without even a completely finished build with Urus and enhancements and everything, I still finish with 47 seconds remaining. With everyone testing the new uniform, I was actually kind of curious if her old uniform could still keep up, or if the jump from the old uniform to the new one was actually pretty massive. So in order to test that, I did the same stage with her old uniform, up to the midway mark, which is 30 bars, to see how quickly she could finish it. With the old uniform, it takes her a minute and 21 seconds to get to that midway mark, and with the new uniform, it takes her a minute and 11 seconds to get to the midway mark. Now you might be thinking that that's evident proof that the new uniform isn't really that great and doesn't really add much to the character, but that's hardly the case. In the long-term duration of the fight, the uniform actually adds a lot. The third skill has a heal, which means that if you want to push to higher stages of Null or World Boss Legend Mephisto, then you absolutely need the new uniform to get the healing from it in order to live long enough to fight the full duration of the fight. Besides this, the rotation when using the new uniform is much easier because the fourth skill damage activates a lot quicker than when using the old skill. When you use the old skill, you have to wait at least one to two seconds more to delay cancel the fourth skill, and you kind of have to offset the single skill damage proc in order to line up your proc on the fifth skill itself. With the new uniform, you don't have to do that. And then the final point is that if you have a multi damage proc CTP, like a CTP of Judgment or CTP of Rage, the uniform becomes even that much better since you can even use the third skill to a degree before you cancel it right away, which does add a lot of extra damage to the character and makes the uniform much better than the previous. Just as a quick note, in order to get the healing from the third skill, you have to let it play out, so in order to get the most value for the character, in PvE at least, a CTP of Rage or a Judgment is preferred if you want to push those higher stages of World Boss Legend. Even though I tested a CTP of Destruction in Timeline, I did end up switching to a CTP of Judgment since I found the penetration from the Destruction didn't really help too much when her burst damage was essentially taking out the opponent quicker than their Invincible was proccing. Besides that, the damage proc from the Judgment and her lingering skills or multiple skills that she would activate very quickly allowed her to carry that very high damage across a multitude of skills and take out opponents fairly quickly. The obvious downfall though is that she's a complete glass cannon, but sometimes just wiping the opponent is good enough, especially in content like Alliance Conquest. After switching to Judgment, I wanted to see just how good her burst damage was in Danger Room Extreme, since that's usually where the best burst damage characters are prepared, and I was basically able to one-shot the boss even with just White Fox support that only gives me that chain hit damage increase and no leadership. The funny part was that I was able to take down a Moonstone who actually had a leadership and is notoriously known for being one of the best one-shot characters in the game. Here is another example of the one-shot potential, me soloing Giant Boss Raid Galactus. Even though it's not as impressive as it used to be, she can basically do it in under 10 seconds depending on your card stats. If you're curious what her Alliance Battle Extreme score is on the No Restrictions Day, I was able to score around 9.5 million with a mighty CTP of Judgment. I didn't necessarily have the most ideal game, so I'm pretty sure that she can push to at the very minimum of 10 million, and considering that again I don't have her artifact, 
I'm pretty sure that she can go up to 10.5 million, even 11 million with people who have completely maxed out builds and probably even more. I wasn't able to test her too much in Alliance Conquest since like I said, she is a bit fragile, but if you pair her up with the right team, you are able to take down some pretty strong characters like the Defenders. Say if you throw a character that has that physical immunity leadership in the lead spot, then she can make the most out of her damage while trying to keep her alive a little bit longer. Her skills do have some nice lingering effects and damage, so things like the 4th skill and the 6th skill will still do damage even if she dies, which is nice even if you go with a damage proc since it'll help try to at least wipe the enemy team if she isn't able to survive to basically guarantee the win by herself. Again, she is pretty fragile and you can build her with something like Transcendence or an Authority. I wouldn't really recommend a regen because her health is kind of low, but regardless of how you build her, she does have good burst damage. And if you build her with a proc and put her on a good team, you'll be able to take down some pretty strong characters. I'm working on the Colossus and Mr. Sinister videos next, but I might not be able to get them out in time before the Uniform Discount ends. So if you want my opinion on those, I would say that Colossus is probably a pass in terms of the Uniform. You could probably do without it, as you'll see in that video. And for Mr. Sinister, I would probably advise getting that Uniform if you are able to get his artifact. The uniform itself is pretty good, but without that artifact, you're not really gonna get the full value of the character, especially in PvP, where you'll most likely use him. If you have the idea of using the character in PvE, then you obviously can get the uniform and it really shouldn't be a problem whether you have the artifact or not. That was the Psylocke video. Overall, I think the Hellfire Gala update wasn't really anything too special. It just gave us something to work with while the devs are working on the main patches. And these holiday updates were kind of just small updates to mull us over. As always, if you liked the video, consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for your time and watching, but the video's now over.